Namaste. So let's continue with the introduction to the Shiva Sahasranama. We went over in the last few videos the origin of this episode in Mahabharata that we're quoting from, where the dying Bhishma was surrounded by all kinds of important personalities. And even though all the great demigods and sages were there, still Upamanyu was named to be the reciter. And we went over the reason for that because he heard these names directly from Shiva himself. And then he goes into the origin of these thousand names. So let's pick up with verse 11. Anadi nidanasya hang sarva yo nir mahatmanaha nam nam kanchit samudeshang vakshye hyavakta yo ninaha. I will tell you a few names approximately of that great one who is the origin of the world and who cannot find an origin for himself. Varadasya Varenyasya Vishvarupasya Dhimataha Shurnu Nama Samuddesham Yaduktam Padmayonina Please hear the collection of names as revealed by Lord Brahma, the greatest among those who give boons, who is the form of the universe and wisdom personified. So this is very strange. We're going to hear a collection of names of Shiva extracted from a much larger collection made by Brahma. Well, that must have been very early in the history of the universe, in the time of, of the great lingam, uh, the Agni lingam, that later on became the mountain Arunachala and which signifies Shiva and Shakti together, united. That means Sadashiva. Sadashiva is beyond the material universe. And the reason or the proof of that is that neither Brahma nor Vishnu could approach the limits of the Agni Lingam. It was beyond them. And they are, as stated here, the form of the universe. Brahma is the form and Vishnu is the materials. So in this way, we see that actually Shiva and Shiva's names, because they're identical in quality with him, their only referent is he who is beyond this material universe. So these names are of equal quality. They're transcendental. They're inconceivable, they're infinite, timeless, not subject to change or diminution, what to speak of non-existence. They exist eternally. They exist before the universe comes into being, during its existence, and after its dissolution. So these names are to be received from higher sources. It's not that we can make up some names of God. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Uh, that would be a human product, and that would be with human intelligence, which we know for a fact is limited. I mean, you know, how many of your plans and predictions about what's going to happen actually come true? Uh, if you're like most people, it's probably down around 5%. <laughs> and even then, the ones that you get right don't come true exactly or the way you would like to see it. So, come on, human intelligence is incapable of describing the Supreme. That's just a fact. Uh, that's just the way it is. So, if we are going to get a collection of names, it has to come from a source much higher than human intelligence. So, here we have a collection of names by Lord Brahma in the beginning of the universe, fresh from this experience of the Agni Lingam, and before he got a bad attitude <laughs> towards Shiva, 
due to Rudra being born from his third eye, his anger. And consequently, Brahma identified Rudra with his son, as his son. But actually, of course, he's not his son. That's just the pretext, or that's just the, the method of manifestation that Shiva used to enter the universe so that he could claim to be one of the demigods, one of the devas. But actually, he's way beyond that. Well, he's Deva Deva. He is the god who the gods worship. Dasha Nama Sahasrani Yan Yaha Prapitamaha Tani Nirmatya Manasa Dadno Gritam Evodritam. These thousand names are the result of churning the ten thousand names told by Brahma, similar to getting butter from curd. Gire saram yata hema, pushpa saram yata madu, gritat saram yata mandas, tatai tat saram udritam. This essence has been taken after serious thought, like gold is taken out of mines, honey is taken out of flowers, and ghee is taken out of butter. So here the word saram appears several times. Uh, I think a better translation would be um, like gold is taken out of my, like the essence of the earth is gold, like the essence of flowers is honey, and like the essence of milk is ghee. So these names are the essence, sara, uh, like we used to call this channel dharma sara, which means the essence of dharma. So, what is the essence of Dharma? It's to worship the Supreme and eventually meditate on the Supreme and realize oneness with the Supreme. Because after all, the Supreme is everything. Even though in material existence we are presented with an illusion, <laughs> a very convincing uh, illusion, a long lasting illusion, a persistent and a continuous illusion that there are a bunch of separate objects. This is called jagrat. Jagrat means normal waking consciousness. But waking consciousness is limited because it's affected by ignorance. After all, we can't see even what's on the other side of the wall or on the other side of our eyelids if we have our eyes closed. <laughs> So our senses are extremely limited and imperfect. Uh, the example is cited in the Vedas that an object that is far away appears smaller. Isn't it? Well, why don't we see it at the same size all the time? See, this is a defect of our senses. This is a defect of our also our conception of the structure of the world. We invent such things as directions, distance, measurements, movement, change, huh? birth, death, old age, disease, suffering. <laughs> These are all inventions. They all refer to the temporary body, not to the self. It's very strange. The self inhabits the body or any form by taking upadis. Even Shiva takes upadis. And in Shiva's case, the upadi is Ishwaratvam. Ishwaratvam means the beingness of Godhead, the beingness of the controller, the master, the origin of everything. So Ishwaratvam is the upadi of Shiva, but in our case, it's jivatvam. We take the upadi of one who is born, jiva. So in our case, there is birth, growth, performance of work, creation of byproducts, dwindling, and finally death. And then after these stages of transformation, one again takes birth in a new form. So this process is known as samsara. 
Sangsara means the wheel of birth and death. The Buddha called it paticca samupada, the process of dependent origination or dependent arising. That from ignorance, which means upadis, sankara arise. Sankara means thought forms, intentions, desires, the conceptions of limited existence and so forth. So from these Shankara, consciousness arrives. Consciousness means the awareness of an object. We already know that there really are no objects. It's all an illusion. Duality is simply an illusion of separation. So we plunge headfirst deep down into this illusion due to the delusion that I am a separate individual. I am a different person from everybody else, and I have a different form, different thoughts, different desires, different activities, and so on and so on. But this is all ignorance, because actually, if you look very closely, you cannot find a sharp border between any two so-called objects. <laughs> look with a microscope, an electron microscope, even better a scanning electron microscope, best of all, and you find there is no real boundary between any one object and another. Everything merges seamlessly into everything else. That's the reality. So when we look at the world, what we see is a very amazing illusion, the illusion that there are separate objects and that I, meaning my body, is one of them. And since I identify with my body due to the covering of the upadi of being a jiva, uh, one who is born, then I go through so many adventures based on trying to maintain this body, even though this body is due to die by its own nature. Buddha said, one's death is born along with one's birth. So as soon as one is born, as soon as one comes into being, comes into the creation, then it's already foretold that he's going to be going out. <laughs> Whatever goes up must come down. <laughs> Whatever is created must also be destroyed. And so that is true even up to the whole universe because the whole universe is created. Even the rascal, nonsense, idiot, atheistic, materialist, reductionist, scientists huh? who believe in the religion of scientism, <laughs> they also accept that the world is created. Isn't it? Because there is no way, there is no instance of anything found to exist in the material world that doesn't have an origin. And similarly, these thousand names that we're about to study also have an origin, and their origin is with Lord Brahma. Brahma created a list or a prayer, a hymn, of 10,000 names of Shiva, and now due to a very intricate and intelligent process of editing, they have been selected a thousand names, actually a thousand and eight names, and these will be the subject of the prayer to be recited by Upamanya. Aung Tatsa, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namasivaya.